You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. All set for your flight? Yep, I've got everything I need. Eye mask, neck pillow, T-Mobile, headphones. Wait, T-Mobile? You bet. Free in-flight Wi-Fi. 15% off all Hilton brands. I never go anywhere without T-Mobile. Same goes from a water bottle, chewing gum, nail clippers, okay, passport. Okay, I'm going to leave you to it. Find out how you can experience travel better at T-Mobile.com slash travel. Qualifying plan required. Wi-Fi were available on select U.S. airlines. Deposit and Hilton Honors membership required for 15% discount. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So, Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. The cream of the crop! Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name's Jeff. Joining me in the studio today, I've got Ken, Matt, and Neil. How are you guys doing? Yes, quite. We're doing great. Yeah, doing all right. Are Matt's, you though? Matt's here. Matt, Matt is here. <laughs> yeah, but on the rare occasion. Now, this is the culmination of what we've been building to. Matt hasn't heard this, but we had a great review on iTunes, mm-hmm. Matt, and we've been talking about it for so long. Oh, <laughs> uh, the three fun guys? Three fun guys and their friend. <laughs> and I'm the friend? I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> because I'm only here sometimes. It was... Uh, it was I'm uh, not a fun guy. <laughs> Jeff's the least fun, but like they don't know that. Well established, I yeah. think, at this point. Well, I told Jeff, I told Jeff yesterday, I think he's a fun guy because I wouldn't spend every waking moment that I have with him. <laughs> I think you would as a good as a good friend. I think if... you'd hang out with someone who wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> I say, well, all I know is that reviewer probably enjoys the show, but meant that to sow chaos, and he succeeded. He did. Yeah, yeah. He whoever she. whoever you are. I'm going to well try played. my best to be a fun guy. I don't want to be the friend. Three three hosts, or was it three... Uh, three fun guys three and fun a friend. Guys and their friend. And their friend. Yeah, right. And Who a pizza comes? place. Yeah. Ryan You're going to keep trying that joke until one of us laughs, and it's never going to happen. Now, I laughed a little bit. I like the show. Yeah. Well, I was a fan. Uh, fair enough. We have some other fun guys and gals joining us today, though. We do indeed. So um, we've already sort of divvied up our teams. Uh, we beforehand figured out who might pair well with some of our strengths and weaknesses. So uh, joining uh, Matt's team today is going to be our Intercontinental Champion, Gina Kimenow, returning. She previously hosted a game of Triviality, which we are very grateful for. How have you been, Gina? Great. Yeah, I've been great. Um, just pretty much just been working and uh, since I've been on in November and looking forward to some vacation time. Haven't had much since then. Um, I am actually going to be going to Australia in November. And so Ooh, nice. I would love to pick your guys' brains about what I need to do when I'm there. That's awesome. Definitely play a game of Knifey Spoonie. Yeah. <laughs> Top priority. That'll be mm-hmm. so much fun. Yeah, definitely reach out to us uh, about that. And I'm sure you've been listening the last, I don't know, um, 20 episodes or so. And I know we've missed a couple or one or two uh, Hitchhiker's questions. And you send us those those great books. So Which we've definitely read. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting on it. We're getting on it. We're trying to trade them around. But uh, we definitely got a few of those questions wrong, and we felt so bad. Only half of us can read, so it's the really The Intergalactic difficult. Gargle Blaster. Inter... Pan... Pan... Oh, sh- uh, <laughs> number the 42 pan galactic gargle blaster the pan galactic. there you go right. there you go that should be your team name okay matt and uh Gina. i'll never say it once though <laughs> pan galactic gargle blaster the pggbs and our other guest today our host in fact is returning fellow intercontinental champion uh, we've got with us taylor cook how have you been taylor pretty good guys pretty good guys Welcome and gals Welcome back um just trying to beat the heat a little bit here in boston staying in some cool ac it's, uh, I think it's a lot warmer than normal here. From what I would I've been say told. there's some kind of change in the climate that's causing <laughs> these issues. Would you say it's like a warming ish uh, trend? It's possible. Yeah. Okay. It's a little, a little bit warmer everywhere. Uh, but who problem. believes in that? It's probably a hoax, anyway. So. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Fake news. Anyway, um, no, yeah, I just started my second year residency, so that's been pretty busy. Um, and I'm glad I was able to make some time to, to do this today. Yeah, we mm-hmm. appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we always like when people uh, take time away from their actual responsibilities to hang with us for a little bit. Yeah, and goof around. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah that's what sure. it's all about. 
that's what it's all about. Um, Taylor, you were on my team last time. We had a lot of fun. We did some Shakira mm-hmm. impressions, but uh, yeah. oh, that episode was great. Some Cockney uh, but, accents, <laughs> terribly, yes. probably borderline offensive Cockney accents, but yes. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, uh, Jeff, um, it's time for everybody's favorite part of the show. Oh, yeah. It's time for Darren to read the rules. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. I am the cream, yeah. The cream of the crop. Now, he did that with a uh, dental dam in his mouth <laughs> while he was Not talking. He's dam. so Wait, is, consistently is, oppressive. Is that where you keep your mouth open, dental dam? No, I don't oh, no, so. no, that's a, that's a something else. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, they are, they are actually the same thing, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. good. We're safe. Yeah. So we don't have to cut it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Neil. Tone that line. Tone mm-hmm. that line. Always. Yeah. On that note, why don't we send it to Taylor for Let's question start one? Let's this goddamn game. I can't. All right. <laughs> Round one. So question one is in the category of fashion statements. So what textile pattern commonly seen on formal wear in the Western world finds its origins in Persia or modern day Iran, but is named after a town in the United Kingdom? Today you might find it singing you whiskey lullabies. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm just, I know it's a pattern. I just don't know if it's a we could do that fabric pattern. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll lock in. Okay. Um, so what do you what are you brainstorming over there, Gina? Okay, so uh, whiskey lullaby. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Alison Krauss, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then who does she sing it with? With the guy from Led Zeppelin, right? Isn't it? Isn't oh, Robert Plant? Um. I know, I know I know they had an album together. I don't know if it's off that. I feel like it's a country singer. Yeah, it, it um, sounded country, so I ignored the, the clue because I was like, <laughs> I don't know. This. Oh, and oh, I, oh, Paisley. It's Fred Paisley. Okay, so do you think, is Paisley a pattern? Yes, yes it is. Yes, okay. Paisley's a pattern. I feel really good about that. We're locked in with Paisley. That sounds really good. I'll let Jeff take it. Yeah, I hope that's not the right answer because uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of this pattern myself, so I refuse to wear ties. Uh, or anything with Paisley on it, but we went uh, herringbone. Yeah, and uh, Gina did have a nice little poll there. The answer is Paisley. Wow. I, uh, I'm usually like Jeff. I, I generally shy away from Paisley, but I bought a Paisley bow tie for the first time the other day, and I really, mm. really like it. it I inspired actually, your question writing? I, uh, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I've, been, I've been gifted over the years very many tie, and all of the Paisley ones except for one have been donated, but I have a very nice deep purple Paisley tie mm. that I do enjoy, but the rest of them had to go. Yeah. All right. So moving on to question two in the category of riding on a horse. In early 2019, what artist released the quickest song to reach the number one spot of Billboard's Hot 100 since 2016, but sparked controversy when it was removed from the Hot Country Songs chart? The song's first remix featured none other than the man with the achy breaky heart, Billy Ray Cyrus. Don't so, worry, Matt. So I'm not gonna... asking about the artist that wrote the song. Yeah, I'm not, not going to crib off your sheet. We had a question earlier today about this being uh, number 17, 17 weeks in a row, uh, being number one. So. Yeah, passing Mariah Carey and Boyz II Men for one sweet day, right? See, told you we would Jeez, know. I screwed it up. So I told you he would know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew it was them, but I didn't remember the song. Yeah. The Je- other Jeff one. and one I can uh, lock, lock in on this one. Yeah. Gene, uh, do you know this one? Um, no, I don't. I just, uh, heard something on the radio about this yesterday and I can't, I can't pull his name. Uh, it's, uh, Lil Nas X. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) We, we lock in with Lil Nas X. It's hard to miss it in the video since it's on the back of his jacket. (laughs) (laughs) I love that video. Uh, yeah, it's Lil Nas X. I I wrote this song or sorry, this question back in, uh, like April or something. So Mm -hmm. I had to reword it a little bit because things had changed. Yeah, originally yeah, I just said remix, not, I had to say first remix now because it's been right. remixed like 2,000 times. <laughs> well, and he, he wants to put out like multiple ones. Like every time it starts dropping, he was talking about doing different remixes of different people. I was very confused God, when I looked it why? up online the other day because I was like, oh, what, what are people interested in about this? And I saw his channel had like 10 different versions yeah. of the song and right. I was like, I don't, I don't know which one's which. Like I'm so confused. So I, that makes sense. I saw a meme the other day that said something like, uh, the year is 2030. 
Lil Nas X has just released his 400th <laughs> remix of, of Old Town Road. It's 42 minutes long, but you still listen because you heard the Barack Obama versus fire. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. Uh, I've had it. <laughs> You're over it. I've had it with this world. No matter w- the thing is, no matter when this episode's released, the song's going to be number one. So right, this is a right. Timeless so question. It's always relevant. All right. Yeah. Moving on to number three. Category is stuck on you. Miley Cyrus is the most well or is most well known for her time on the Disney show Hannah Montana, her controversial music career, and putting things in her mouth that just shouldn't be there. However, her earliest credit comes from the movie Big Fish, where she plays an eight year old girl named Ruthie. This movie brought together what eccentric director and composer duo for one of their nineteen collaborations. Uh, we can lock in over here with uh oh, what's our team name? We don't even have a team name. Yeah, oh, I was no. about that. Did you guys announce um, the team names at all? Like, I, we talked about the one, but... We didn't. See, thank you, uh, Taylor. Uh, so, Matt, you're with Gina. Uh-huh. And what, what did you want your team name to be? The Pan Galactic Gargle Yeah, Gar- what Gar- you guys Blasters. said earlier. Yeah, yeah. Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster. Uh-huh. Uh, and Jeff, how about we'll be the Cursed Cans? And we'll explain why later. <laughs> I can't believe you're making this a thing. <laughs> okay. But the Cursed <laughs> Cans will lock in. Uh, Gina, any ideas here? Uh, yeah. Th- okay, so that's Spielberg film. <sighs> Uh, who would be the composer? I'm bad at that because I I originally thought that this was a uh, Elfman Burton joint, but it mm. it's not, and I don't know who does the, the Spielberg ones usually. Um, unless it is Burton, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Elfman. Oh, it no no no. I think you're right. No, I okay. think it might be Burton. Um, okay. So why was I thinking Spielberg? Okay, so I was on. Hold on, does the score go? Sorry, I was on complete the list a while back, and it was a Burton question. And so, and I believe Big Fish was one of them. I don't know why I was getting that confused. Anyways, let's go with yours. Let's go with... Burton and Elfman. Yes, thank you. Oh, that was a roller coaster, listening to that one. Of emotions. Of emotions. Yeah, Danny Elfman and Tim Burton for Big Fish. Yep, and that is correct. The answers are Tim Burton and Danny Elfman. Moving on to question number four, down the hatch. The number of permanent teeth normally present in an average human's mouth is 32. How many deciduous teeth normally develop in the average human's mouth? Neil counting his teeth like he knows what he's doing. Do you think that's what that means? If it is, I think you're wrong. You think that's too many? (laughs) I do. (laughs) Right? I'll tell you what. I'm going to believe you. You're the science guy. And then if we're right... Then I get to slap you in the face. Mm, not kind of um, one of that would not ready. be the first time I've been slapped in the face. You want you want to go with your answer? And it won't be the last. Uh, yeah, we'll go with Jeff's answer, and we'll see we'll see if he's worth his weight in gold. All right, all right. I don't know anything about teeth. Uh, I know I got some. Uh, that's where I'm at. Gina, do you, have, do you have any inroads here? Um, yeah, I originally like my first thought was that he was talking about wisdom teeth, but I think I think he's talking about baby teeth. I think that's baby teeth. Okay. Um, uh, do you want to just cut it in half? You want to just go? 16? Yeah. I'm trying to think of how many quarters I got as a child, and it's, that doesn't Ooh. help at all. <laughs> so, uh, 16, 16 sounds good. I'm okay yeah. with that. Yeah, let's go with we're, that. We're locked in with 16. Uh, so, t- we thought it was wisdom teeth, possibly, which we were way off. That's, but that that would be vestigial teeth. Vestigial. See, I, that, I was thinking vestigial, but then I thought dis, disingenuous? What is deciduous? it? Uh, deciduous. Deciduous. No, but I think, Ken's, I think Ken's right about the, the, the trees, right? Because the deciduous trees, you count how old they are by the rings, right? So you can tell how old somebody mm. is. But what did you guys answer? Vestigial. And we went with four because we thought it was wisdom teeth. Okay. Right. Matt, you said you got quarters for teeth as a kid? I don't know. That was a joke. All right, well, if anything. you got a quarter, you'd have $5 because the answer is 20 uh, Ooh. And yes, deciduous teeth are baby teeth. Um, deciduous, like the tree, means that they shed their leaves, so you mm. lose your teeth the same way. Well, not the same way as a tree. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> question five, weekend vibes. Arc Music Factory was a music production company dedicated to the discovery of quote-unquote new young singers by helping them write and produce songs and music videos. The now-defunct company ran into controversy after getting into a legal squabble with one artist family over rights to a song after it went viral with 167 million YouTube views in three months. What was the name of this artist and song that had listeners eating cereal and trying to pick a seat in 2011? I I mean, I can lock in if if you're okay with it, Gina. Go ahead, yep. Okay. I have no idea. When he started talking, I thought Eating maybe cereal and trying to pick a seat. Yeah, I thought maybe it was like Baby Shark, but that that's just recent. 
Um, this was 2007? 11, 11. 2011. 11. Oh, thank God. <laughs> this is Friday by Rebecca Black. Oh. She liked going to class and doing oh. that kind of crap. Yo, you know what? That makes sense because uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it's right, but um, she hooked up with a producer who like helped make the song and then it became famous. And then I think there was a legal squabble. And then I want to say she went back with that producer for her, for whatever the next song was, Monday or whatever. Um <laughs> But, um, After Friday is Saturday, Neil. <laughs> yeah, but no one works on the weekend. Um, Still waiting on Sunday. He hasn't She hasn't put it out yet. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like that answer. You want to go Friday? I think so, yeah. Okay, Friday I by... Sort of, then, and back to this, um, YouTube started doing their like YouTube year in review mm-hmm. about that time, and she was like the sole host of... Of like 2011 or 2012, so the, the that would year make rewind sense. or whatever they do. Yeah, yeah, the rewind, YouTube rewind. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're gonna go Rebecca Black by uh, Friday or Friday by Rebecca Black. <laughs> yeah, I I actually just watched. There was an interview with her about this thing where she just went in on on a whim and made a stupid song, and then uh, they put it on their YouTube video and they got like three thousand views in the first three months, and then uh, I think it was either Tosh or somebody promoted it out there, and then it went viral and. It, kind of ruined her life for a little bit but uh rebecca black friday was our answer yep and the answer is rebecca back friday um the producer was the guy who raps randomly driving in the car <laughs> like in the music video um but i i Why my buddies with and all I, these, like, in kids? college uh we used to watch like as many of these as we could there are some mm-hmm. really some true gems out there um my favorite is by Alana Lee, and it's called Butterflies, and it's just auto-tuned garbage, and it's amazing. Oh, nice. We'll have we, to look that up. We should make one of those. I, I would make one right away. Let's do yeah. it right now. All right. So right good. now, after five questions, uh, Matt and Gina, the Pangalactic Gargle Blasters, have 40 points. Jeff and Neil, the Cursed Cans, is that right? Mm-hmm. Have 30 points. Ooh, a high-scoring affair. All right. Uh, all right, moving on to the second half of round one. Question six. Category is Golden Oat Soda. So Toppling Goliath Brewing Company is a craft brewery located in Decorah, Iowa. Its flagship beer is named Pseudo Sue after one of the largest and most extensively preserved T-Rex skeletons ever found, which is on exhibit at the Fields Museum in Chicago. Despite this cool tidbit, however, Toppling Goliath isn't one of the 50 largest producing craft breweries in the U.S., so your question is, what is the largest producing craft brewery in the U.S.? That's an interesting thought. I, I was thinking about because I don't think they're owned by anyone else, and they're technically craft. I'm fine with that, then. Jeff and I are taking an interesting angle here um, with our answer, and I think we're just going to lock it in. So my first thought, so I, I, I know originally Sam Adams was a craft brewery, but I think that they were bought out by Anheuser, or one of the two, so I don't think they count anymore. Um, what were some of the ones you were thinking of? Blue Moon came to mind. Um, mm-hmm. Boulevard came to mind. Um, and then I started thinking about when I lived on the West Coast. Yeah. Um, I know that Rogue, yeah, like, Rogue okay. Brewery is, uh, is really big out there, and I know that I see them Do you know if um, here. If, if Sierra Nevada is owned by a bigger corporation, because I feel like that might be, I, I feel like I've heard a question similar to this, and the answer was Sierra Nevada, and I'm not sure if this was the exact question, um, but I know it's it's a huge, huge craft brew, and it's you know there's a Sierra Nevada everywhere. It's kind of like the go-to IPA, kind of like the mm-hmm. standard. Um, so that was kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, I like that. I like okay. that answer. I'd be happy right. with that. Okay, we're going to lock in with Sierra Nevada. And um, we know we see them everywhere, um, and we thought maybe they weren't bought out by a larger organization, so we did go with Sam Adams. Okay. All right, so you guys got uh, number three, which is Sierra Nevada out of Chico, (sighs) California, and number two, which is the Boston Beer Company that makes Sam Adams uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, but number one is the Yingling. Uh, Brewery is uh, DG Yingling and Sons out of Pottsville, Pennsylvania. I've um, heard of that one. It's right. crazy because you they they won't you don't really get them here. They won't right. go. Uh, they don't they're, sell they're east nowhere. of Ohio. I th- or, That's what uh, west yeah. of Ohio. I don't think. Um, when it's I, amazing. When I was in uh, when I visited Philadelphia, um, we would ask for you know what beer do you recommend? They, everyone said you have to have Yingling or Yingling, whatever it is, while you're here. Yeah. And I said okay, and it was okay. <laughs> it's fine. That's <laughs> yeah, super take. popular, yeah. and I think it's the nation's oldest brewery as well. Mm. I think that yeah, I've definitely heard about them before. Interesting. So yeah. I think they are. Number seven, ain't no mountain high enough. 
Since its first official ascent in 1953 by Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, Mount Everest has seen an explosion in popularity. During the 2019 season alone, an estimated 900 successful summits occurred. These feats would not be possible, however, without the help of climbing aids called Sherpas that are not to be confused with the ethnic group indigenous to Nepal and the Himalayas, Sherpas. If you can't hear the difference, that's okay, because it's just the capitalization of the first letter that delineates the two. Um, what is the term used for a word whose meaning changes depending on whether or not the first letter is capitalized? Yikes. Wow, that's a great question. Um, we'll lock in with whatever you want to put down, Neil. Sure, we're locked in. I, I'm sure it's, it ends in probably phone, because right? That's probably... Oh, yeah. It, it, okay. like, or nim. <laughs> That doesn't really help as much. Or uh, ism. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think we're going to get anywhere near that. Um, so we're going to, I guess, we'll just lock in with cinephone. <laughs> so I like oh. the way it sounds. Yeah, I, I just tried to search for the answer. Um, and it was, basically, it was what was in my wallet. And I just said, it's the capital one. Taylor, let's end this question. <laughs> Yeah, so where where a homonym would be two words having the same spelling or pronunciation but different meanings, a capitonym is oh. uh, is a word that changes when you capitalize the first letter or lowercase or, or capitalize the first letter. Number eight, crepuscular. The term crepuscular is used to describe an animal that is most active during dawn and dusk. What twilight hunters use their asymmetrically positioned ears to accurately pinpoint prey with three-dimensional sound perception during these hard-to-see hours? Yeah, I'm just picturing an animal that somehow has like one ear on the top of its head and then like, the other one on the side. <laughs> you're, you're, you're seeing like a dog and it's got one's yeah. got like a droopy ear and one's got like a really perky ear. <laughs> right. I love today we had a question about eyes that were on the side of your heads and now the ears that are asymmetrical. No. Was and it a Peppa Pig question? No, it was no. Not. It's just our imaginations though are like little kid drawings that I think well. about. I never uh, want to talk about Peppa Pig again. I just listened that to that time. episode. You guys, should, yeah, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't seen it, so we'll one day. The episode? Peppa. <laughs> there you go. We're going to lock in over here. You guys can talk. Okay. Uh, so what kind of animals are you thinking about? Uh, so, man, I think it's an owl. Okay. Um, and I'm pretty sure that owls have asymmetrical ears. Okay. Because you can't, and you don't even really notice because they're like hidden under their feathers. But I, right. I think, I think it's an owl. And that's why they're always turning their heads all the way around to get the 3D sound kind of thing. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I just made that up. It's probably not true. We're gonna lock <laughs> in with owl. Yeah, Jeff and I were between bat Audio. and owl, and uh, I wrote down owl initially because of the clue of the 360 degree vision, um, which I know they spin their heads around like The Exorcist. So. Um, <laughs> I, I just thought of being the owl at nighttime that it would use its hearing when it's its expert vision during the day, but the hearing at night. So we went with owl as well. All right. And one of my favorite tidbits about my favorite animal, that is an owl. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, their, their ear holes are like slightly, one slightly higher than the other. So they can uh, receive sound in their brain kind of like uh, can pick up on the difference in how fast sound gets into one ear versus the other. So they can almost have like 3D hearing. It's pretty cool. Okay. Wow. Good job, guys. Um, number nine, Forgotten Tunes. The 1964 Walt Disney classic Mary Poppins features many catchy songs that have had kids singing along for over half a century. One not so catchy or upbeat song occurs midway through the film about an old woman feeding the birds. According to the song, how much does the woman pay for her bags of bird seed? Oh, wow. Do you have this meal? <laughs> I think so, okay. yeah. <laughs> you, you locked in? Yeah. So here's something about me. I've never seen Mary Poppins. Fascinating. Really? Gasp. Have you ever even yeah. used a kite before? Me? Yeah. I had a kite once. Does that mean anything? See, I don't even know. I don't know. Well, let's go fly it. Yeah, I was going to say, you can go fly a kite. Okay. Ooh. All right. Uh, so this one's on you, Gina. <laughs> Oh, uh, so sorry. Um, uh, it has been a really long time since I have seen Mary Poppins. Um, like in uh, The Pigeon Lady in Home Alone 2. Uh-huh. Exactly. Like exactly. That. It's, it's like exactly that. like that. It's You're, shot for shot. It's a remake. <laughs> now, here, yes. this is what happened. So the lady from Home Alone 2, right? Right. Look, you picture her face. Right, she there. moved to New York when Joseph Gordon-Levitt left her at Angels in the Outfield when she was the foster mom. And she got depressed and went to New York. And that's what she became. Oh, man. Same lady. Because the, the Angels never won the pennant. They never won the pennant. So she had to move to New York and get a bunch of birds. That all makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Um, it doesn't help with the question. So it's, you're probably looking at a... Uh, it's it's uh you're looking at english money right probably it's probably some pounds 
mm-hmm. bushels. Spare, um, spare quid. A bushel almost, and a peck. I would almost think that it'd be probably pence. Um, yeah, six pence. Sure. None the richer. But none the richer. Thank yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to whack him with six pence. <laughs> Um, you were kind of on the right track there. Um, the Don't song, patronize me. <laughs> no, no, you were because it, it does have to deal. It deals with pence, uh, but it's a little cockney. But uh, she pence. says uh, a tuppence, mm-hmm. tuppence a bag, which is two pence. So tuppence. Oh. The answer is a tuppence or a two pence piece. Wow. Okay, moving on. Last question of the first round. Glove potion number nine. Gordie Howe had one of the most legendary careers in the history of hockey, playing in five different decades. Aside from being nicknamed Mr. Hockey and being a 23-time All-Star, he also had a statistic named after him, a Gordie Howe hat trick. Although he only achieved his namesake feat twice in his career, what three stats does a Gordie Howe hat trick comprise of? I don't know hockey at all, but I think I can reason this one out. All right. Um, okay. Um, so, okay, I see what you're saying there. Okay, so we'll, we'll lock in. Okay. Uh, Gina, what were you thinking? Okay. So a goal, mm-hmm. an assist, right. and getting a fight. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure on that. And, and I know that it, there's, it's not happening anymore because last year actually was the least amount of fights that it's ever. There's like less and less fighting, so you don't really hear about this as much. And the guys uh, who score goals don't uh, fight so much. <laughs> usually, yeah. Do they track fights? So and that, and that was kind of my question was maybe it's like a f- they consider it if you get a five minute major for fighting but I think a fight is good enough so we're gonna lock in with a goal assist and a fight. I think we we got a little too detailed here because I wrote three goals three assists and I was trying to think. Oh my of, god! I know I was trying to think <laughs> of like the best game it's, by any player ever yeah, on NHL ninety four uh-huh. on easy. And so yeah, I wrote goals assists fist fight. Jeff wrote shootout open net. Uh, then we, I was thinking about the different ways you can score. Uh, okay. On a, you know. Yeah, so I, we, we're definitely incorrect, but we, we put three goals, three assists, and a, a fist fight. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a little ambitious with that answer, but uh, yeah, the answer is a goal assist and a fight. I mean, mm-hmm. technically, your answer does contain yeah, technically, a Gordie Howe yeah, hat a Gordie, trick. Three Gordy Howe hat tricks. Two more game. fights. And two, two more <laughs> fights, and you'd have three. <laughs> Which is actually more than his whole career. It was the greatest game ever played. <laughs> Look at Gordy Howe, 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 Howe I don't know how he had time to score three goals yeah, and a, get in three fights. He puts it in the basket and punches his lights out. That's a 30 for 30 for sure. <laughs> but at the end of regulation, it looks like uh, the Pangalactic Gargle Blasters of Matt and Gina have 60 points. Jeff and Neil of the Cursed Cans have 50. Yeah, all right. Anyone's game. Uh, mm-hmm. Before we throw it to Taylor, um, both of our guests today, uh, Taylor and Gina, are both Patreon supporters at the Intercontinental Champion level, uh, which means they get uh, individual loot crates uh, from one of the hosts sent to them, plus a poster and some other things. Uh, but Jeff, how can people join them and, uh, and I guess, uh, be- become part of the group on Patreon? Yep. If you'd like to support us directly for a small monthly donation, you can do so at patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast. Link is in the show notes. As we say every week, there's so many different things that you can check out there at every different support level. We're very appreciative of anyone who would be willing to support the show. So mm-hmm. just go check it out. There's something for you there. Yeah. And uh, Taylor, you said you had a swing round today that was going to be pretty interesting. What do you got for us? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, oh, just just a little plug about the uh, the individual loot crates, though, on Patreon. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know Patreon starts at, what, $1 or something mm-hmm. but yeah at yep. the at the 20 the 20 i think it's 20 dollar levels when the mm-hmm. individual loot crates yeah i got the jeff one recently it's pretty cool i just rolled a natural 20 for my charisma for the episode um with <laughs> nice. a little <laughs> bag of dice um and a few other cool things so uh i definitely highly recommend um supporting the podcast All well right. i'm i'm glad you're enjoying it i uh <laughs> I, I was uh, very happy to curate each of the boxes i put a little something special and different in each person but, so but stop signing up for jeff's people yeah. Just way in the lead. Oh, it was Hope such a hard pick. I wanted all, I wanted all <laughs> of them. Speaking I of love that. how sore they are that I have like the same amount as the rest of them combined yeah, for box know. choices currently. Sure. <laughs> People love D&D dice. Well, That's, Gina's is Mine being... has D&D dice in it too. It Unfortunately, does. it's a huge part of our childhood, so I'm not surprised it's in both boxes. But... Gina's is being sent out today, though, from me. She actually picked me, so I thank you for that, Gina. That's a good choice. I've Ooh. seen Neil's boxes, and they're very solid, so... Yeah. They're definitely the heaviest, if that is a metric you care about. <laughs> There's just a... I'm sorry, Gene. It is a 65-pound box. <laughs> it's full of lead. That bag and a half, bag and a half of dog food. That's yep. <laughs> All right. So for the swing round, uh, it is 
uh, completely based and revolves around one of my childhood heroes, which is uh, Weird Al Yankovic. So right. one of the most prolific and famous parody artists of all time, Weird Al is a genius when it comes to lyrical parody. I'm going to give you the original song and artist, and for five points each, you tell me the title of his parody song. Now, to make this a bit easier, because I know not everyone is versed as versed in his nah. uh, discography as I am, um, mo- all but one of these, are the name of the song is kind of a parody of the title of the song as well, okay. to make it a bit easier, because he has some that aren't like that. Um, Okay. All right. I've got about nine already that I'm, I've got <laughs> locked and loaded. So. Okay. So I'm going to give you the original song and artist, and you tell me what his parody song was titled. Okay. okay. So number one, My Sharona by The Knack. Number two, American Pie, Don McLean. Number three, Another One Bites the Dust, Queen. Number four, okay. Lump, The Presidents of the United States of America. Number five, Lola by The Kinks. Number six, King of Pain by The Police. Number seven, Hey Mickey by Tony Basil. Number eight, Gangster's Paradise by Coolio. Number nine, Royals by Lord. Number 10, Beat It by Michael Jackson. Number 11, Moni Moni by Billy Idol. And number 12, Zoot Suit Riot by The Cherry Poppin' Daddies. So Neil, as you, uh, as you consider this answer, uh, tell, tell us about the Cursed Can. Yeah, the, cur- the cursed can. So uh, for a few months after I had a bottle of water, I would crumple it up and I'd throw it in the trash can in the studio from kind of where I'm sitting, which is about six, six feet. feet. <laughs> and I would miss it every time. And I'm usually good at hitting targets. I've missed it my own share of times. Yeah, and Ken has missed know. it. And Jeff would kind of, not meanly, but he would just be like, man, you can never get it in the can. I'm like, there's something about that can. It's cursed. It, just believe me, I, it's not my fault. And then I'll let Jeff take it from there. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm picking on you, Neil, because we were at 4th of July and you picked up one of those, like, smoke bombs that was used up. And you're like, I'm going to hit this street light. And you hit it from, like, 40 feet away. And you can't hit a garbage can from 6 feet in the studio. But so we proved that none of us could because it took us about 5 minutes. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. Yeah, we had about 25 <laughs> shots. Matt came in. He, he, get it on a, he got it on a second, second try, try, which yeah. is commendable. But, uh, yeah, it, the can is cursed. <laughs> Whatever. So that's why we're called the Cursed Cans today. All right, so now that we're through that uh, garbage can story, it's time for uh, our answers. Yeah, we uh, we came back into the room. Neil is having a bad hair day. I'm running with scissors, and uh, we'll see if we get these answers right. Mm, wow. Yeah, I've over here gotten a poodle hat on, so... Uh... <laughs> Let's see if I dare to be stupid. Is that all of them? Do we do I it? love this okay. so much. Okay. Anyway, uh, okay, so number one, the artist and song were My Sharona uh, by The Knack. Uh, this is My Bologna. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also said My Bologna. Yep, this was the song that actually kick-started Weird Al's career in parody. Uh, it was approved uh, in writing by The Knack, and it got him a one-off deal with Capitol Records because mm. The Knack loved it so much. It was My Bologna. All right, number two, American Pie by Don McLean. Um, I was trying to figure out the title for this, and we were really struggling, and then I remembered Taylor said that almost all of them are direct parodies. And then I remembered that this one isn't American Pie related. This one is The Saga Begins. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love this song. Uh, it's The Saga Begins. Yep. It's basically so be a, a scene for scene recount of uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. This is Saga it's Begins. It's probably the better way to watch the movie is just listen to the song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number three, Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. Uh, this one is another one rides the bus. That is 100% correct. We said <laughs> another one rides the bus. Yep. Uh, Another one of his early works, as you mentioned earlier, it's Another One Rides the Bus. All right. Number four, Lump by the Presidents of the United States of America. We couldn't figure this one out. uh, And I just said, uh, let's use an exclamation of old people from the 1800s. And we said, harumph. (laughs) (laughs) Gina, you had this one. Why don't you say? Yeah. So this one was Gump, a parody of Forrest Gump. That's right. Gump sat alone on a bench in the park. Uh, This is uh, Gump. Ever on topic and up with his pop culture, Weird Al. All right. Um, number five, Lola by the Kinks. Oh, yes. Uh, so this is another Star Wars one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we met him in a swamp down in Dagobah. Yeah. This is Yoda. It's Y-O-D-A Yoda. Uh, Yoda. This is a favorite of Lin-Manuel Miranda. I think in an interview he was talking about he saw him in concert in middle school and like this was his favorite song. And then he got to sing it with him on stage oh. later once he became like... 
famous and, and it's pretty cool. inspired hamilton yep right yeah <laughs> all right number six i think this one was a bit difficult for at least one of the groups um mm-hmm. king of pain by the police yeah we didn't know what this one was uh we thought that uh it was a song about magician david blaine <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, i just kind of moved some of the words around and thought it was sting is vain <laughs> That would have been a fantastic parody if he did that. Uh, this is actually one of the deep cuts. I don't know why I liked this one so much as a kid. Probably because I didn't know the original song. And Weird Al is just so great. Uh, this is a song about him basically filming a commercial about his clothing store. Um, where his price tags are low, his staff is underpaid. But they call him around town the king of suede. Oh, okay. Wow. So it wasn't tantric pain. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, number seven, Hey Mickey by Tony Basil. Yeah, once, we, once again, didn't know this one. We wrote, It's Sticky. Yeah. <laughs> so um, me and Gina didn't really have an idea on this one. And, uh, and then I just kept thinking, and I'm pretty sure he has a parody where he plays Ricky Ricardo. And I think it's this one. We said, Hey Ricky. Yep. Uh, so this, yeah, it's I Love Lucy inspired Ricky. Uh, I'll take Hey Ricky because it's pretty yeah. much. Is the, it just Ricky? It's just Ricky, but yeah. Okay. It's, okay. it's way close enough, and you almost didn't get it. I was impressed with the pull there. So Yeah. All right, number eight. I think everyone got this one. Gangster's Paradise by Coolio. We spent most of our lives uh, <laughs> churning butter in an Amish mm-hmm. paradise, so we said Amish paradise. Gina? Yep, Amish paradise. Yep. At 4.30 in the morning, he's milking cows. Jebediah feeds the chickens, and Jacob plows fool. It's Yo. Amish paradise. <laughs> Number nine, Royals by Lord. This one we were having trouble with, and I remembered seeing the music video because it was from a recent album of his, and I wasn't too familiar with like some of his older stuff, and I, I remember seeing this on YouTube, and he had like a foil hat on. I forget <laughs> if it was making fun of conspiracy theorists or whatever, but um, we said foil. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is the video, and I, can't, I couldn't remember if the song is actually called Aluminum Foil or just Foil. I originally wrote down foil, so we'll just lock in with foil. Yep, what starts out as an infomercial for keeping your, your food items fresh, um, but turns into a yeah conspiracy theory, uh, government's out to get you sort of uh, warning. Um, it, this is foil. Music video has Patton Oswalt right kid. at the end, pulling his head off as the director and being a lizard. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number 10 is Beat It by Michael Jackson. Uh, this is the classic Weird Al song, Eat It think you think yeah. <laughs> it might be uh yeah uh, a follow-up to fat that's how he got there it's eat it yep uh he went on a big michael jackson parody stint for a little while yeah. this is eat it number 11 uh, i think this one was also proving a little difficult for at least one of the teams this is Moni Moni by a billy idol we just said phony phony mm. i don't know we said phony pony this is a song about a guy lamenting his weekly or his monthly payments to his ex-wife. This is alimony. Oh. <laughs> Here she comes now on an alimony. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. And number 12, Zoot Suit Riot by Cherry Poppin' Daddies. Once again, didn't know it. So we said another fad diet. Mm-hmm. I can hear the song in my head, but I cannot get the first two. It's, I'm pretty sure it's a diet, but we went with fruit juice diet. So, so, so close. Yeah, this is this is a nod to fad diets. Um, this is put away your bottle of beer. It's a grapefruit diet. Grapefruit diet. Mm. <laughs> Why, I'm lamenting that. I love, that I love how we're enjoying it, and Ken is just so disappointed over there. <laughs> it's like he doesn't enjoy fun. It's, no, it's just not to my taste. <laughs> <laughs> For the same reason I don't like uh, Mel Brooks movies. Uh, Weird Al falls in the same category. Apparently, Weird Al is a nice guy. My dad went to one of his book signings. I respect. I respect the hell out of both men. And, uh, and he's Weird like, Al is very talented. He's musician. like, would you mind if I put you in a headlock and you make a ridiculous face? And Weird Al's like, sure. And so, like, my dad like literally puts Weird Al in a chokehold. It's a great photo, but uh, yeah. So I, I would not let people touch me like that. So he must. He must be an okay Sounds guy. Sounds like a nice guy. <laughs> I hear he's a good guy, though. I do right. hear he's a good guy. Okay, at the end of uh, that round, it's 105 for the Pangalactic Gargle Blasters, Matt and Gina, and the Cursed Cans, Jeff and Neil, trailing at 85. Mm. Still a close game. Yeah. 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 Question one, fight. Of the 100 and... 
18 elements currently on the periodic table, only two appear as liquids at STP, or standard temperature and pressure. One of these is named after the Roman messenger of the gods, and the other is used to make flame retardant components of electronics. Name both of them. I will give, uh, I will give half credit for just one All of right. them if you just get one of them. I think I know the other one. Ooh. Gina's playing an all-star game today. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff, what do you got here? Because I, I, I got my end of the bargain here. <laughs> yeah, I had that one too. And we it's the probably the one. easiest one of all time. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Uh, we've got our answer. And then it's the first planet. Locked in? Yeah. You guys are locked in? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, obviously, Mercury, right? We got uh-huh. that. <gasps> I know. <God>. Yes. <laughs> uh, what did you think the second one was, Gina? Uh, so, I, I think it's bromine. Um, mm. I'm pretty confident that it starts with a B. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be not barium, brobalt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, help, I'm helpful. I, I, like, I like bromine. Oh man, I love that muscle tea. What color is that? Brobalt? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're cool with it, we can just go with bromine. I am. Mercury and bromine. Bromine sounds pretty good. We were, um... We, we had gotten mercury, and then the other one that I was thinking of, I think it falls just outside of standard temperature and pressure, is gallium. So we said gallium. Gallium is pretty soft, um, but the only two that are liquid at standard temperature and pressure are mercury and bromine. All right. So nice. good job. Gina. So we All get right. five points for mercury. Yep. 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 Cool. <laughs> five points. <laughs> these, these guys. All right. Number two. Speaking of liquid, Team Liquid is an esports organization based out of the Netherlands. To date, they sponsor teams or individual players competing in 14 different esports games. Name any three of the games they compete in. Okay, yeah, we're, we're locked in. Um, so the ones I wrote down right away were League of Legends is a definite, that one's like the biggest esport, one of the biggest esport games, and then Fortnite. Okay. Uh, cause Fortnite's huge. And then for the other one, I put Starcraft and I don't know if they still have competitive Starcraft, but I know for a while it was one of the biggest competitive games. Uh, I also thought maybe, uh, PUBG, which is player unknown battleground, which was the one before Fortnite. That was a really popular one. Um, go with Starcraft. If you're confident that that was okay. popular before one of the yeah. other ones, they probably still play it. Okay. We're going to lock in with those three. Um, yeah, we have got some consensus here on League of Legends and Fortnite, and then we we also went Overwatch. Mm, that's a good one. Okay, um, so the 14 games, I'll just list them all, uh, mm-hmm. are Apex Legends, Auto Chess, which is kind of a newer one. Actually, when I first wrote this question, that wasn't one, and they got rid of one and then added that instead, so I had okay. to change this question yesterday when I re-researched. Um, mm-hmm. Clash Royale, which is a phone game. Uh, Fortnite, CSGO, which is Counter-Strike Global Offensive, right. uh, Dota 2, Hearthstone, League of Legends, PUBG, Quake, StarCraft 2, um, so I will accept StarCraft, because right. yeah, and uh, Street Fighter, Super Smash Brothers, and Rainbow Six Siege, so they don't they don't have an Overwatch team anymore, actually. Um, and they dropped their Halo team in 2017, so. You know, I, I was thinking Halo, but I thought that nobody plays Halo. Did you say <laughs> Team Fortress? Uh, they do not have a there? Team Fortress team. Okay. And, well, oh, I don't even think many people. I, I mean, sure, the, I'm sure Valve still has the servers open, but like, I don't, I don't think anyone really has yeah. a competitive scene in that anymore. Cool. Uh, All right, so points for Pan Galactic and no points for uh, Jeff and Neil, unfortunately. The can is still cursed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question three. Speaking of esports, equestrian is a category of event that's been featured at the Summer Olympic Games since 1900. Which of the following is not a discipline that will be featured in the 2020 Summer Games in Tokyo? Show jumping, eventing, barreling, or dressage? Show jumping, eventing. That one will be. Dressage. Really? Did Dress- they, unless dressage, they dropped it. Y'all. And what was the other one? Uh, the other one was barreling. Did they barreling. drop it? Because that used to be one. I know it used to be. Mitt Romney did it, um, but... I I think I read an article. I don't know why this is dr- sticking out to me. I thought I read something okay. on Twitter yeah. about it. I'm, I'm willing to back your horse on that because oh my God. Mitt Romney was like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do things that like normal people liked. Oh, God. So, Gina, what do you know yeah. about these horses in the back? 
Um, not a whole heck of a lot. Um, hmm. my, my logic here is kind of game theory. Mm -hmm. Um, just because like barrel racing is kind of a rodeo event, mm -hmm. I would say probably barreling might be the one that doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about barreling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know in uh, in Star Fox, uh, the frog <laughs> will tell you to do a barrel roll. Wrong. <laughs> that Pe Peppy. Tap Z twice. Uh, oh. <laughs> so you guys know more about that than me. Yes. Um, so it's, it's Peppy the rabbit, not uh, Slappy the frog. Oh, no, Slappy's <laughs> the one that just needs help all the time. Yeah. And disappears. Is it okay. Slappy? Slippy, I think. I think. So. Slippy. Slippy. Whatever. Anyway, I like your theory, and we can lock in with barreling. I don't know why this one uh, stuck out to me. I thought I read something online about it, but... Here's yeah. why I like this as a potential answer is because it's the one that's the least sport-like. Right, exactly. That's And maybe that's what the article was, was insinuating, but I, I mentioned Mitt Romney, his horse did this, and we went with dressage. So the answer is, uh, for the exact reason Gina said, it is barreling, actually. Um, <sighs> oh. Yeah, I looked this up. I was just trying to do like a free flow and ended up on equestrian somehow i don't know that much about equestrian but yeah i guess the three olympic categories mm -hmm. are show jumping eventing and dressage eventing is kind of like a triathlon type thing where they have three different events does the horse wear the medal afterwards i don't know how this i hope so i actually don't know the but no barreling put is, your hoof uh, over your heart there were a lot of rodeos where i grew <laughs> up so i knew that was a thing so i just put it in because i thought it sounded good okay all right this is question four speaking of events Rwanda and Burundi both celebrate their independence days on July 1st. Both countries were under what nation's rule until 1962? Uh, oh, really? Okay. I think so. If that is correct, Jeff, um, you are a scholar. Okay, we're locked in. All right. Uh, Gina, what are you thinking? Okay, so I'm trying to approach this from the angle of the Rwandan genocide. Mm -hmm. Um with the Tutsis, right? And the, yes, and, the Hutus, and how Hutus. they were kind of, and ha how colonization was like really what divided mm -hmm. them. Um, and so I feel like it may have been, I'm feeling like it was the Dutch. I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm I, okay with Dutch if, if you feel pretty strongly about it. And, and, and it would be something, maybe he was searching Dutch boy on, on Google <laughs> when he was writing these questions. And that was one of the things that popped up. So there's a little tie-in. Gosh, my, I mean, my second guess would be English, but I just don't think that that's right. Yeah, I, I kind of want to go with my first instinct and go with Netherlands. Okay. Sounds good. We are locked in. We are uh, sort of in the same neck of the woods. Um, I sort of remember uh, feeling like this was the Belgians. So mm -hmm. we went Belgium. All right. And the answer is Belgium. Oh, nice. wow. Uh, good pull. Yep. Now, Neil, did, did, uh, did Don Cheadle bring you that coffee you have in your <laughs> in your kitchen? He, he did not bring me that coffee, no. Uh, but uh, someone else did dressed as Iron Patriot, and it was sort of a knockoff version. Uh, it was called uh, Jeff. What's another element? It was the aluminium uh, <laughs> national. <laughs> the alu <laughs> the aluminium <laughs> national dropped it off, and just, thank you for your service. Uh, speaking of Belgium, question five. Makes me think of waffles, um, which makes me think of breakfast. Being an egg guy, I often enjoy a, an omelet or a nice frittata. But uh, but wait a minute, wait. What's the difference anyway between an omelet and a frittata? I've made both of them. I'm just trying to think of how you just... Hold on. You have not made... <laughs> I've heard about your omelets. <laughs> I've made an omelet and I've made a frittata. You attempted omelet. What did you put in the omelet? Uh, when? You were trying to be nice to your girlfriend and you, oh, you f***ed was, it up royally. That was a long... Okay. That was a... That, <laughs> that's funny that you know that. Yeah, that was when we first started dating. Uh, yeah, I was trying to, to cook an omelet and what did I put it in? It was... Uh, hummus. Hummus, right. She's... <laughs> oh, what? Because Colleen's like, oh, I love hummus. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be a little like yeah. chef-y. And, and I was like, oh, I'll put a little hummus in there. And it was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> just throw whatever she likes yeah. well there was you know i hadn't cooked anything before i was the, like the I can intention cook, was there yeah i was like i can cook a grilled cheese or i can make you cereal and she's like well i'd like have an omelet mm -hmm. so how about an omelet i did make a frittata with her though yeah a couple months she's, ago what is colleen like ice cream and hummus <laughs> ice cream and hummus <laughs> just throw it in there some eggs yeah uh but uh. I, I did make a frittata recently with colleen and i yeah. i know kind of the difference okay um so write it out okay i don't know how to explain it but we'll lock in okay 
I think that I think that the fact that the um, omelets ingredients are inside, like, or because hmm. I feel like you cook the omelet for a little bit, you cook the eggs for a little bit before you put in the toppings, and then you fold it on top. So I think that part of our answer should be that the the frittata has like the ingredients cooked in okay. to the fried egg, whereas an omelet sure. is like folded over the ingredients. Okay. So we'll say that, that the omelet is folded over the ingredients is kind of our answer. Yeah, I, I, it's a kind of a similar answer because I don't know the terminology. I'm showing the guys here the frittata that I made oh, with nice. Colleen. It looks very really proud nice. of himself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... The, on the crowd. I should actually. Well, the the um, omelet... People don't care about your frittata. Incorrect. The omelet, you know, you have the egg that you scramble and then you, you kind of flip it over. Um, and uh, the frittata is more like a pie almost. So it's it's uh, in a pan. It uses the whole pan and then there's ingredients in it and you slice it into pieces um, and they're kind of cooked. Like a quiche. Like a quiche kind of. So that's... I don't even know how to describe it, but that's kind of the difference. <laughs> 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 so chalk right. that down to one sentence no that was a sentence it was a run on sentence it was a run on <laughs> sentence so basically I agree with what Matt and Gina said right. one is like uh, folded over one is like pieces of a pie right so a frittata has the ingredients cooked in with the raw egg and the omelet has the ingredients folded into the cooked egg so oh, wow. you guys both got it we were like word for word though yeah Gina I was like how is she reading literally what I wrote <laughs> for my <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good job, guys. So uh, let's go back to something comfortable and familiar dentistry. What kind of dental specialist focuses on the gums and bones surrounding the teeth? All right. You guys are locked in? We're locked in. All right. Um, so I wrote down gumtometrist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I have no use to this one. No. I just, I remember one time where she like had to like poke like up into my gums like to like check mm-hmm. the pockets or something and i want to say it was, it was it starts with an o or something this is a long story to tell you that i don't know the answer to this so i <laughs> i think it's ortho something isn't it or is that just what a dentist is uh orthodontist is a braces oh uh, well it's an answer yeah i mean we can go orthodontist if you want to have a slim chance of yeah well it's a, it's a dentist thing so mm-hmm. <laughs> orthodontist yeah our answer could be wrong uh, i don't know it's just the sign that i saw near my work so that's why it clicked for me but jeff wrote down endodontist mm-hmm. yeah who i had one do a root canal for me so neil thinks that's what it is so we're gonna go with that why'd you put yourself through this having to listen to these guys <laughs> so uh i know i i I, I added this question because in the past when you guys have had dentistry adjacent questions, I just like laugh and giggle listening. Um, it's, it's pretty funny. But uh, no, an, or, uh, an orthodontist would be someone who is into the straightening and of okay. correcting of your occlusion or your bite um, and the straightening of teeth. An endodontist focuses primarily on root canals. That's my specialty. Um, someone who deals with the bones and gums surrounding the teeth would be a periodontist. Mm. Hey, Neil, oh. what did I write down first? Jeff wrote it down, yeah. It was the first thing I wrote. Well, you write down everything. Yeah. You're going to be right with one. And you, I think you were talking about the periodontal probe, which is what she was using to measure the attachment level between the gum and the uh, bone. Ooh. Yes. Mm. This is very specific. Question seven. Speaking of bones, Wishbone was a TV show spanning two seasons in the mid-90s about a dog who would imagine himself as the main character in famous pieces of literature, such as Romeo and Juliet. What kind of a dog was Wishbone? It was this, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, we're locked in. Okay. Um, are you familiar with this, Gina? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was an Eddie. Yes. I was going to yep. say, do you know which kind of dog Eddie was? It's it's a Boston Terrier, right? Is that uh, it? Or... Jack Russell Terrier. Jack Russell Terrier. Why don't we both know this? Weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, locked in. Jack Russell Terrier. We said the same. I got it, too. That's surprising. <laughs> to this day, I still have the what's the story, wishbone... Stuck in my head, but it's, uh, yep, you guys are both right. It's a Jack Russell Terrier. I have the the salad dressing theme song stuck in my head. There's oh, no way the that dog's alive. Wishbone right? Ranch dressing? For Wishbone? Yeah. yeah. I want to see the gritty reboot where he does, like, oh. Stephen King books. I want to see <laughs> the, Oh, I thought uh, you were talking about as Gritty would do the reboot. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> a reboot gr- called Gritty. Inserts gritty inserts himself into Gritty as Edmond Dantes. <laughs> oh, I love that. All right. Good job, guys. All right. So, number eight. Speaking of Jack's. Jack Daniels is the top-selling American whiskey in the world. 
it is branded as Tennessee whiskey despite meeting all of the regulatory criteria for being classified as a straight bourbon. Using the number assigned to the distillery during government registration, what nickname is given to this sweet brown liquid? All right, yeah, I, I'm fine going with that. We're locked in. Uh, well, the number that came to mind first was the 707, but mm-hmm. I'm not super confident in it. Yeah, uh, it, it is a 7. Let's just lock in with 707 and hope that that's something. Okay. I uh, hope it is, too. <laughs> We're locked in. Jeff was pretty um, pretty adamant about putting this number down. I wasn't sure. I thought it was like 65 or something, but he put 401. The uh, The nickname is Old Number 7. If I would have put oh. it one question earlier, it probably would have been a little too meta. Mm. But uh, I, I would have accepted just 7, but I don't think I can take 707, oh, that's unfortunately. Fine. Yeah. Number 9. Speaking of old numbers, what term was coined in 1920 by the nephew of a mas- of mathematician Edward Kasner for a digit 1 followed by 100 zeros? Thanks to the kid, we no longer have to refer to this massive number as 10 duo trigantillion or 10,000 sextillion. All right. I think uh yeah, Jeff and I are locked in on this one. We kind of came together on this one. Um, I'm just going to search my brain really quick and see if it comes up. <laughs> oh, please tell me spelling is, sounds. Is it, uh, it is, is your mind coming up with just like this nice white background? Yeah, I feel some colored lucky. letters let's, in it. Let's say, let's say Google. Yeah. Let's lock in. We locked in with a Google. Yep. The answer is a Google spelled G-O-O-G-O-L. All right. Question 10. Speaking of Google, the company and search engine Google is known for many things one of which is being Easter eggs and April Fool's Day jokes displayed on their website. Their first April Fool's Day prank came in the form of announcing the Google Mentalplex, which could apparently search the internet using mental power. What year and date was this announcement made? Yeah, Jeff and I have a guess, but we're not really... I mean, because it it should be that. Yeah, right. But I don't know the year. Um, Well, that's the easy part. Okay. Well, yeah. We are locked in. I, I'm cool. I'm good with 2010. Okay. 2010 yeah. it is. Okay. All right. 2010. Uh, yeah, we we didn't know either. We knew it was probably April April, April 1st. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we went 4-1, and then we just thought just for the fact that it's continuing on with the ones, we said 4-1-1-1, so 2011. So you guys said April 1st, 2011. You said April 1st, 2010? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this actually surprised me. Uh, it's actually April 1st, 2000. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. yeah. I I had no idea that they were like doing stuff like that that early. So that's that's kind of cool. But yeah, All year right. two thousand. A lot of answers down on the paper, but none of them we've successfully locked in. It looks like Neil. Nope. Uh, yeah. So what are our scores going into the final round here? Yeah. Thanks, Neil. The scores are currently stand at the uh, Pan Galactic Gargle Blasters, Matt and Gina, at one sixty five. Right behind them, Jeff and Neil at the Cursed Cans, 130. Well, you know, I feel like we're taking a worse beating than the score reflects, Neil. Mm-hmm. It's true. Well, I think so, too. not doing too bad. We're just getting everything right. Well, let's see if Good we can uh, come back here. Like a, Unlike the Cursed Can, we'll actually make a shot here. And we got one shot left, Jeff. So let's, let's see if we can do it. Hey, man. Final Four round categories, please. The categories are, number one, uh, the big five. Number two, rise to the top. Number three, Van Damme. Number four, Nature and Science, Fiction. And number five, Working Out the Kinks. Okay, the uh, wagers are locked, and let's get those questions. All right, question one, final round. Category, The Big Five. One of the only three mov- one of only three movies to win the Big Five Oscars, Best Picture, Screenplay, Director, Actor, and Actress, Sounds of the Lambs is one of my personal favorite movies of all time. Despite winning Best Actor for the film, Sir Anthony Hopkins is only featured for about 14% of the movie's runtime. Within one, how many minutes of on-screen time does Hannibal Lecter have in the movie? Uh, question two, rise to the top. What short-lived UK-based psychedelic rock supergroup had two hit songs break the top ten of U.S. charts in the late 60s, which were White Room and Sunshine of Your Love? Question three. Van Damme. What 2016 Vine turned meme featured a boy named Joshua complimenting his friend on his impeccably white shoes? 
The internet sensation resulted in the pair appearing on Ellen and their catchphrase being used in several marketing campaigns. Question four, nature and science, fiction. The nature boy Ric Flair had quite an illustrious professional wrestling career spanning 40 years until his retirement in 2012. Since the 80s, he used the same entrance music, which can also be heard during one of the opening scenes of what 1968 movie? And question five, working out the kinks. Kinky Boots won the Tony for Best Musical in 2013. But if you haven't seen it, don't panic. This isn't a question about the plot. What internet-beloved rock and roll frontman had a sinfully good but tragically short 2.5-month run on Broadway as the show's lead role, Charlie, during the summer of 2017? After a little bit of deliberation and a little bit of editing magic, all the answers are locked in. Question one, the big five. What did you guys have for the amount of time Hannibal Lecter is on screen and Silence of the Lambs. We wagered the big 30 on this one. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe it's 16 minutes, but just to be safe with the, the one safety number there, uh, we went with 15 as our locked-in oh, wow. answer. Uh, so we said 15. We wagered 15. Um, and then we said 15. So we feel a lot better because Neil said 15 also. Yeah, both both are getting points at 16 minutes, just like Neil All said. Right. Nice. Ooh. Uh, question two. I think uh, Gina got the uh, the category hint. Um, what was the name of the band? Yeah, uh, we wagered 15. Uh, Gina, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, so this one, uh, Rise into the Top, uh, this would be Cream. Yep, uh, fronted by legendary uh, guitarist Eric Clapton. We said Cream. How much did you wager? What did we wager? Zero. Zero. Uh, on balance, off balance, doesn't matter. The Cream will rise to the top. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Your mustache is crooked. All right. <laughs> All right. Number three, Van Dam. What was the name of the meme? Uh, we wagered 30 and we went, damn, Daniel. Yeah, we wagered five. Um, looking at those white vans, uh, we uh, said, damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Back at it again with the white vans, though. <laughs> it's damn, Daniel. All right. Number four, nature and science fiction. What was the name of the movie? Uh, this one we wagered zero, and uh, there was a uh, a rogue bone flying through the air uh, when this song played, and that would be 2001, A Space Odyssey. Uh, we wagered 10 and uh, also said 2001, Space Odyssey. Wow, a lot of missed opportunities there for the, uh, the curse <laughs> cans. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number five, working out the kinks. What was the, uh, the name of the actor and uh, singer? Uh, yeah, we wager 20, uh, and, and just for the record, I told Jeff I wanted to go 30 all the way down, but... We didn't um, have enough points. I know. You're correct. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, <laughs> Panic at the Disco's uh, lead singer, Brendan Yuri. Yes, quite a tragedy, right? Isn't that writing sins? That was the clue, maybe. Wow, the tragedy is on the side of the table, Matt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why you're the curse cans, because your betting strategy was trash. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we wagered 15 and also said Brandon Yuri. It's Brendan Neary. All right. So that was an exciting uh, end of the game. A uh, lot of uh, interesting betting here, and it ended up being very close uh, due to a lot of correct answers. But Jeff and Neil, as the cursed cans, did bet uh, trashily, I guess you would say. <laughs> but they ended up with 210, so that's a respectable score. And today's cream of the crop, Matt and Gina, the Pangalactic Gargle Blasters right. with 225. Congrats. You are the cream of the crop. Nice. Nice. Cream of the crop. Strong that performance applause is for Gina, teams. not Matt. <laughs> yes. Uh, applause for Taylor's game and also uh, the fact that we lost to Gina, who is a, a great competitor. So I'm glad it was to Gina. And I, I'm her friend, man. <laughs> That's how we feel about it. <laughs> one, one, <laughs> one friend contested and her friend. <laughs> man, uh, whoever did that is really achieving their goal right now. <laughs> So uh, G- Gina, any uh, any last words uh, before... Uh, I think we have to say the last words, Neil. Yeah, we do. Uh, well, for our listeners, though, any last words from Gina for the listeners? Um, yeah, uh, let me just give a shout out to uh, my friends um, Adam and Dee. Thank you so much for being my Harry Potter trivia teammates uh, this last week. And damn you, Rita Skeeter. Uh, you will, they will understand that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much for um, having me on again. Um, whenever you guys do that Futurama episode, make sure that you uh, give me a call. Absolutely. You got it. 
and uh, Mr. Mr. Cook, uh, our favorite dentist, our best dressed <laughs> host and competitor. Um, any last words from you uh, after that amazing game? Uh, yeah, thanks so much for for letting me come on and 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 uh, try my hand at, at writing trivia. It was a lot of fun, a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to be, but uh, you guys played really well, and I'm glad that uh, knowing the things that I wrote about doesn't make me uh, the only one knowing a lot of this <laughs> stuff. You guys were were impressed me a lot with uh, some of those polls, so good job and, right. and thanks a lot for the opportunity. Well, thanks again for uh, for hosting. It uh, it's very helpful for us, and it's very exciting when we do so well, uh, <laughs> even if we don't come out on top right now. Yeah. That's right. Hey, we don't have to come out on top. We can uh, still keep throwing those pieces of trash in the can and hope it'll our bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, on that note, I'd like to thank uh, Taylor again for hosting, Gina for joining us uh, as a contestant, and for Ken, Matt, Neil, and myself. That was Triviality. <laughs> Teaming up with Matt today is going to be our Internet Continental Champion, Gina Kimino. What the? Don't try I'll try that again. Our, yeah, our Internet Continental. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite breakfast. <laughs>